Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome to another Usical Problem. Before we start, I just want to say thank you to all of the support I've been getting on my previous video. And if you haven't checked that out, please click the link above. Uh, it's it's pretty cool, um, and it has been like the most popular video so far on my channel. So thank you again for that. Uh, I'll be doing more of that stuff in the future. But we haven't done a Usical Problem for almost a month, so. Today we're back with a useful problem, uh, 2018 January contest, silver problem, lifeguards. In this problem, Farmer John has opened a swimming pool for his cows and figuring it would help them relax and produce more milk. And so he's going to hire N lifeguards and each lifeguard is going to cover some continuous interval of time during the day. And the pool is open from time t equals 0 to t equals 1 billion. And for example, a lifeguard starting at time t equals 4 and ending at t equals 7 will cover 3 units of time because 7 minus 4 is 3. But the thing is that Farmer John needs to fire one lifeguard and he wants to have the most time covered by the lifeguards after firing one lifeguard. So to understand this problem better, let's take a look at the sample input. So here it is the sample input and I've drawn it out over here. And so basically what this is saying that is that there is a cow, there's a lifeguard that covers time five to nine and there's one that covers one to four and three to seven. So I've drawn them using intervals like this on a timeline over here. And so as you can see, right, currently we cover we cover time from one to nine. So we currently cover eight units of time. But we need to fire one lifeguard. And so let's say we fire let's say if we fire this one. If we fire this one, we're gonna we're gonna still be covering time from three to nine. So that is six. So we fire this one. We, we're going to have covered six time units now. So we subtracted two. Okay, let's see. If we fire this one right here, we covered time units from one to four and five to nine. And so this is four minus one is three. This is five. This is nine minus five, which is four. So if we add these up, it's seven. So if we fire that lifeguard, we get seven units of time. Okay. Let's see what happens when we fire this one. If we fire this one, we're going to cover time from 1 to 7 over here. So 7 minus 1 is 6. So we're going to have 6 time units that we've covered. OK, so based on those, we can see that this cow or this lifeguard is the best cow that we can fire. Because after we fire this cow, we're going to still have seven units of time covered, which is the best that we can do. OK, but how do we actually go about solving this problem? Well, we could try every possible um, firing of each cow. So we're going to try to fire every cow, just like what I did. And we're going to we're going to try to get the time covered after that and that wouldn't work because our n is 10 to the fifth and so if we try every possibility we're going to have a complexity of uh, 10 to the 10 which is too slow and so we need to think of something better here but anyways no matter what we think of we still need to try to get the total amount of time covered without firing any lifeguard because that is how much time we're going to have then we can think about what happens when we fire one lifeguard and which lifeguard is easiest um, is the most optimal to fire and so so we're given intervals why not let's let's just sort them for a second so let me get some more space here so we're going to have this one in the front we're going to sort them by start time. So we have this one in the front. And the second one is going to be this one over here. So it looks like that. 
And third one is going to be this one over here. Okay, cool. But this case is a little bit too easy. Let's add some more cows to make this more complicated. So we can add, let's say, one like this, uh, one like this, and one like this, and one like this, and one like this, and like that. Okay, cool. So we've added some cows, and notice how they're all sorted by their start time. Okay, so as I said, the first step we're just is that we're just trying to get the total amount of time covered by all of these cows, and we're not considering firing any cows. So in this case over here, we can generalize this, this case to just two intervals. All of these stacked intervals over here can be generalized to one interval like this. And there's some space here, but all of these stacked intervals right here can be generalized into one interval like this. And so if we find these two intervals, we can just add their sums up to get the total time covered by all of the cows. And so how do we do that? Well, after we've sorted everything, all after we've sorted it by start time, we can just cycle through all of the cows. We can just cycle through like this and check if the current cow is connected to the previous one. And okay, so okay, let's just try to do that. And let's say we have another cow here. All right, these are still separated. So when we start, we're going to look at this cow and it's like, okay, it doesn't have anything before it. And we're going to look at this cow and we can see that the start time of this cow is before the end time of this cow. And so that means that they're connected. So we can count this as a whole group. And so let's see. So these two cows, we can see that the start time is smaller than the end time of the previous cow. And so these two are connected again. All right. Let's see the next one. So this one over here, here is the start time, here is the end time, and oh, it's connected. So cool. But for this one, we can see that although although the start time of this is bigger than the end time of this, it is smaller than this end time over here. And so this is still connected. So if this kind of thing happens, we have to do something special here. Instead of Instead of checking for the previous end time, we should check for the maximum end time that we have seen so far. And so all we're going to record is the start time, the current start time, and the current end time. So the current start time was over here, and the current end time is over here, let's say, for the first for the first cow. And as we keep going, we're going to check the start of the current cow with the current end time and if it's smaller it's connected and then we're going to update the current end time to this and now that means we have an interval like this essentially because these are connected and so we go to the next one and we're like okay so this start time is smaller than the current end time so that means it's connected again so we can update our current end time and for this one we're going to see that that the current start time is smaller than the current end time so it's connected right but we keep, but we don't want to update the current end time because this end time is actually smaller than the current end time so the end stays here and then for this one we can check that the start is smaller than the current end time and therefore is connected okay great so then we update our current end time and so now our current start and current end will point to this giant interval over here. When we go on to the next one over here, we're going to check. So we're going to check if the current start time is before the current end time. And apparently it is bigger than the current end time. So that means we have another interval over here. And so when we have another interval, we can just add to the total. We can just add to the total. We're going to add current end minus current start. 
And this basically adds all of this interval over here to the running total. And now when we go come over here, we're going to change our current start and current end to right over here. So that's our start and that's our end. And now we're going to do the same thing and check if things are connected. So essentially, to find the maximum, to find the total time that are covered by the cows, all we need to do is keep track of if the current cow is connected to the previous group or interval over here. Okay, that's cool. But how do we actually check which cows should be fired? Well, one essential trait that um, the optimal cow to be fired has is that it it covers the least amount of time on it by itself. And so if we think about this logically, right? If we fire this cow over here, we're only subtracting this interval right over here. And that's and that is when this cow is alone, is on the shift alone. It's from this interval to this interval. And that is the interval we're gonna um sacrifice if we fire this cow. And so let's say for this one, you can see that it's by itself when during this interval over here. And so if that happens, we can just, so if that happens, we can just count how long this interval is and that will be the sacrifice. And for this cow, it's the same thing. If you fire this cow, we're gonna sacrifice this interval right here. And so because this cow has the smallest interval, it is the most optimal for us to sacrifice a smaller interval than to sacrifice a bigger interval. And so let's turn our attention back into this case. So in this case, if we think logically, then it is very apparent that this cow right over here is the cow to be fired because it covers no, it, it is never on its own. So it has zero interval. So therefore firing this cow it would do no harm. So the total would stay the same. And it would and this cow is basically doing no work. So we should fire this one. And any time that a that um a cow doesn't have any time by itself, then we could should then we should fire that one. And there is no other cow that can have um a less uh alone time than a cow that doesn't have an alone time. So we should fire this one. So, this will be fired. Okay, but what if we don't have that? What if we don't have that? Uh, what if we don't have this kind of case over here? If we don't find this kind of case, we're, we're left with intervals like this where they're all connected, but none of the intervals are in another interval like that. And so we're going to have groups like this, groups like this, but we're never going to have an interval inside another interval. And so let's let's look at this. We're trying to find the alone time for each of them. And for this cow over here, the first cow, its alone time is just from here to here. For this cow over here, its alone time is from here to here. For this cow, its alone time from here to here. And by now you can find a pattern because for any cow, let me erase this for a second. For any cow, say this one over here, its alone time is just going to be the end of the end of the previous cow and the start of the next cow subtracted, subtracted from each other. And so we can see for all of these cows over here, at least from here, we can also we can also see that for this cow, its alone time is from here to here, and so that's just this subtracted by this. And let's look at this, but for this, it's a little bit different, because you can't really subtract it if it's not connected. And so we need to think about this more, because this because this one this end, it doesn't it's not connected like that it's going to be away. So this n is going to do nothing. And so the alone time is just going to be this to here. And so to generalize that even more, all we need to do is find 
um, is to find the distance here between the start start of this start of the current cal and the end of the previous cal and the distance between the start of the next cal and the end of the current cal and then subtract these two distances from the total distance that we have here to get the little distance over here and so for this case so for this case um we're going to subtract we're going to subtract the start of i mean the end of the current cal by the start of the second cal or the next cal and we're gonna we're gonna get a negative value here but we can't have a negative value so each time we subtract we're just gonna max zero and whatever we're subtracting so for this one it is the end of the current cal minus the start of the next cal And for this one, it's the same thing. If it's not connected this way, we're just gonna we're, like this, like this one. We're just gonna subtract, right, the end of the previous cal over here and the start of the current cal over here. And if we get a negative value, we just max it with a zero to get a zero. And so if we do that for every cal, we are going to get the time that each cal is alone on its shift, and that time will be equivalent to the value that we're going to sacrifice when we fire that cow. And so we're trying to find the minimum, the minimum time, time alone. And then all we need to do as our answer is to, to do total minus this minimum time alone. And that will be our answer. All right, let's take a look at the code for this problem. Now, in the code, I'm going to first say that we're using PII is equal to um, a pair int int because that's where we're going to storing, be storing our intervals with. And we're going to read in the input over here. So we're going to read in the n, and then we're going to have a vector of pair int int called LG, stands for lifeguards. That's going to be of size n. And we're going to keep reading in uh, the, f uh, the start time and the end time as the first and the second in the parent int. Sort the um, vector. And if you didn't know, if you sort a vector of parent int, it's going to automatically sort by the first value. So that's great. And we're going to get the total time first. So we're going to say our total is 0 and our current start is um, the start time of the of the first cal, and the current n is going to start with the uh, start the end time of the first cal, and we're going to have this boolean submerged. So this submerged just means that a cal is completely inside another cal. So the cal has zero alone time, and we can detect it over here very easily. And so we're going to cycle from the second cal, and then if the current cal dot second so the so the end of the current cal is smaller than the end of the previous cal and so that is a case like this so we have a cal over here we can see that the end over here is actually smaller than the previous end and so if that happens if that happens we're going to say submerged is true and then what we're going to do is say I'm um, gonna say uh, if the if the if the start of the current cow is bigger than the current end, so that that means it's separated from previous block. So that is a case like this right over here, where the start of this is bigger than the current end over here. That's the maximum end we have. And if that happens, then we're gonna add stuff. We're gonna just gonna add stuff to the totals. And so total is gonna. It, we're gonna add the current end minus the current start, which is the length of the interval that we have. And current start, we're gonna set it to. We're gonna set it to the uh, start of our current cal, and then the current end is just gonna also be the end of the current cal. Or else, 
then it has to be connected if it's not separated. And so we're going to say current end is max of current end and the second. Actually, we don't need to do this over here because we already check for submerged. Oh, wait, no, we do need to do this over here. Although we've checked for submerged, right, we still need to, we're still, we're, st we're not removing it yet. So we still need to check. The submerged is still there. So we still need to check if the end time is greater than the current end. Then we ma then we update the current end because the end time can be also smaller than the current end, which is a case where it is submerged. And so over here, we're going to just do this again because we only do this when we see a separated one. And for the last one, there is no separated one because the last one. And so we need to add it to the total again. And so now we're going to say if it's submerged, so there that means there is a cow that is completely submerged or uh, have zero alone time, we're going to we're just going to print out the total answer right here and we're done. But if we don't have a cow that's submerged, we're going to actually try to get one that we can fire. And so we're going to set our alone time right now or the minimum alone time to the maximum uh, ever possible value. And then we're going to cycle through every cow and we're going to say the left just means what is covered on the left. So the left would mean over here. This is left. So that means how, how, how many units of time is covered on the left and right is how many units of time covered on the right over here. And then we just subtract um, this giant, uh, I mean the current interval over here by the left and the right values to get the alone time. And so we're going to currently set the left to zero. And if I is zero, so if there is a left, because if it's the first one, we don't have a left, then left is the maximum of zero and the um, the current ending minus the, I mean, not the current ending, the previous ending minus the current start. So that would be previous ending right here current start is right here and so we, it would be this minus this which give us gives us left and then for right we're going to do a similar thing so if um, i is smaller than n minus one so it's not the last one then we're going to say right is the maximum of zero and also the the current end minus the next start so the current end is over here next start is over here and if we subtract the current end by the next start then we get this uh interval over here and then we're just gonna say our total alone time is just going to be max zero um the the second the uh the the the, the end minus the first the end minus the first is just gonna give us the interval all over here that's the, that's uh everything without the cover, and then we're just going to subtract the covers from it. So the left cover and the right cover. And then we're going to say alone time is minimum alone time alone. So that just updates the, uh, the current smallest alone time. Then we just print out the total minus the current smallest alone time, and we are done. Okay, and that will be the end of the problem. And the problem is actually a pretty straightforward problem for the silver division. But all you needed to do is to remove any outliers and think through things logically. And by outliers, I mean things like this. Spotting things like this and knowing that if we see something like this that is completely submerged, it is automatically um, the total time that we have over here. Because this can get confusing if you include this into counting the alone time. This, this is going to get pretty confusing. And so if if we can um, try to get the outliers and the special cases out of the way, then we can focus on the actual problem and getting in the alone time and checking which one to fire. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next Usical Problem.